Once again, buyer's market versus seller's market. What are they and how can buyers and sellers survive them both? Last week, I talked to you guys about how buyers and sellers can survive a buyer's market. And if you missed that video, I'll be sure to link it, link it below so you can go back and watch it. But today I wanna to talk to you guys about how buyers and sellers can survive a seller's market. Hi guys, I'm Tyler, I'm a realtor, and welcome back to a weekly video where I give tips and advice on how to buy, sell, and invest in today's real estate market. Before we get to today's topic, I do want to do a quick outfit of body. I do have one of so my pink, long sleeve, comfortable blouse, and it is from Shein. Um, and then I also have on some white straight leg jeans from American Eagle. Um, they do have a nice tight bottom. And then I also have on a nude heel from Steve Madden. Um, they are, the particular color is called blush. Unfortunately, this particular pair is no longer available on Steve Madden's website, but I did find a pair that is very similar to this heel. It's just a slightly darker nude color, but nonetheless still nude. So I'll be sure to link all these products below in the description. Now let's get to the topic. So what exactly is a seller's market? Well, it's opposite of what I talked about last week in a buyer's market. A seller's market means that the inventory is low. So you have few people looking to sell their home, but you have plenty of buyers interested, which means you have multiple buyers putting in offers on one property. What to do when selling in a seller's market? If you're a homeowner looking to sell your property, now is a great time to sell. During a seller's market, there's low inventory, and low inventory means more attention brought to your property. So what can you do as a seller in a seller's market? Number one, keep the price fair. I know it may be tempting to increase your price because in a seller's market, buyers are pretty much ready to buy anything, but you do wanna keep your price competitive. Sometimes even keeping it maybe below market value so that that can draw up more attention, more offers, multiple showings, and start to eventually drive up the purchase price and create a bidding war on your property. Number two, be prepared for multiple offers. There is a possibility that you will have a lot of buyers fighting over your property. So if you have a lot of interest and you receive a lot of offers on your home, it will be best that you sit down with your agent and comb through each offer properly and thoroughly because at the end of the day, the highest dollar amount does not always win. For example, you might have a buyer who's offering over asking price, but at the same time, they're asking for some type of contingency or they're asking for some type of closing cost assistance. But then you might have another buyer who might be offering slightly less than the asking price, but then they're not asking for anything else on top of that. So be sure that you look at every offer thoroughly so that you can choose the best fit for your property. Number three, be prepared to move. Most buyers who are prepared are prepared to have a quick closing, meaning they're looking to move into the property within 30 to 45 days. And if you're not prepared to move in 30 to 45 days, then that's going to discourage the buyer and turn them away from your property and turn them onto other properties and make offers on other properties. Now, the whole point is for you to sell your home. Let's not get them discouraged. What to do as a buyer in a seller's market? Number one, get pre-approved. Getting pre-approved as a buyer puts you ahead of the competition. Most times when sellers have multiple offers, they're looking for the buyer who's already been pre-approved for financing to help make the process start and go smoother versus someone who has not been pre-approved so they don't know how much they can afford and they don't know what their credit looks like. Number two, start with a strong offer. I know I mentioned as a seller in a seller's market that you should price your home below market value just slightly, but as a buyer in the seller's market, you wanna to try to get a leg up on the competition. So what you wanna do is try to put in the strongest offer you possibly can. You wanna to try to put in the maximum amount you're willing to pay, just in case you get into a bidding war. So if somebody has their home listed at 320, you should try to maybe put in for about 330, maybe 340 if you can afford it. You definitely wanna just prepare to put in the strongest offer you possibly can so that you have your best chance at beating the competition of other buyers who are trying to put in offers on the same home as you. Number three, do not ask for a bunch of extras. You have to remember, this is a seller's market. So when there's a seller's market, the seller typically is getting multiple offers from multiple buyers, meaning you should be putting in as few as contingencies in your offer as possible. It's okay to put in a contingency upon a home inspection, 
But as far as asking for assistance with closing costs or asking for the seller to make improvements to the home probably wouldn't be in your best interest as a buyer in the seller's market. That would do nothing but possibly push your offer to the bottom of the pile. I hope the tips that I gave on how buyers and sellers can survive a seller's market were helpful to you. And if you made it this far, be sure to click that subscribe button as always, and be sure to also hit the notification bell so that you never miss when I post another video. As usual, be sure to comment below any of their topics that you would like me to talk about when it comes to buying, selling, and investing in today's real estate market. Other than that, I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.